Flesh and Blood Worlds was this past weekend, and after watching Gregor's Kowalski absolutely dominate top 8, it's very clear that Count Your Blessings is here to stay, and the question we need to ask ourselves is, what are we going to do to beat it? There are three cards that are quote-unquote answers to Count Your Blessings. We're going to break those down, talk about what decks they fit into best, and make sure that you're prepared for your next event. First up on our list is Poison the Well. Poison the Well is a zero-cost blue instant that says the next time a hero would gain life this turn, they lose that much life instead. Now this works so well because if you have an opponent who has seven Count Your Blessings in their graveyard and then you play this in response, instead of them gaining seven or eight life, they're going to lose seven or eight life, which is very impactful. You can actually win games with this at instant speed because sometimes your opponents will get greedy and fall down to like four or seven. And then from there, you can actually get them with the Poison the Well and put them into range to be able to kill them. This card is great to be able to pitch stack and try to set up for a late game, like second cycle, um, to be able to like really get maximum value out of it. There's also the world where you just play this first cycle. If your opponent is like literally just running out their count their blessings as early as they can in first cycle, which some people do, I've learned, then you can play this in first cycle and just try to get them on the race and just try to run them down. This card pairs really well with Aurora. Because it's an instant, it actually pairs well with a lot of the synergy that Aurora is trying to do. Um, it also gives us some extra blues and matchups where maybe we need a few extra resources to make sure that we have the consistency that we want on a turn-by-turn -turn basis. Another deck that this pairs really well with would be Zen. Now, I know Zen gets a bad rap, but Poison the Well does fit very well in Zen because you're able to like play this and also transcend with it if you need to. If you're trying to close out the game and you need that chi to make sure that you're really going over the top, Poison the Well could turn on the ability to let you actually transcend and make a chi that way. Another deck would be Ira. This works very well with Kadachis because it's a blue and it has a zero cost. You can pitch it to go Kadachi Kadachi and then throw like a one for five in Ira. So Poison the Well is a great answer that has a lot of play in many good aggro decks. Next up is Gravekeeping. This one cost five power attack action says when this attacks a hero, you may banish a card from their graveyard. This works so well against Count Your Blessings because we're able to take copies of Count Your Blessings out of their graveyard and put it into their Banish Zone, limiting the life that they can gain over the course of the game. When you pair that with a 5 power attack action, there's a really good chance that those few points of life could be the difference between winning and losing. There are a few heroes that Gravekeeping slots into really well. The first one is Ko. Ko has the text box of saying anything that's not on the combat chain has plus one power which means that Gravekeeping is a 6 inside of KO because of its natural 5 power attack. This is great because it turns on all of our KO synergies and it lines up to be able to attack Count Your Blessings and make their hand really awkward. Next up is New. This card is so good and new, I'm honestly surprised it's not seen more play. But this card turns on New's hero ability by banishing cards from their graveyard, setting up powerful turns for us, and it also just like it's getting rid of count your blessings. It's a win win. I don't see why new wouldn't be on this card. Also, Gravekeeping being a one for five means that it slots well as a finisher into almost any aggro deck like Ira or Zen or even Aurora if we wanted to put it there. But having Gravekeeping as a one for five that also attacks count your blessings seems like a great place to be in this meta. Last on our list is Talisman of Cremation. I definitely saved the most spicy one for last. This blue zero cost item has go again and says, when you play a card from your banish zone, destroy Talisman of Cremation and name a card. Banish all cards with the chosen name from each opposing hero's graveyard. Being able to banish four to five copies of Count Your Blessings from your opponent's graveyard is absolutely insane. You're talking about saving 10 to 20 life over the end course of the game. And the best part about this is that it only takes you one turn off to be able to put Talisman into play and set up. And if you're playing the right deck that has a lot of go again, you can simply end your turn on this instead of another power card and you can save that for Arsenal. We're going to talk about the few heroes that can play this because Talisman is a little bit harder to pull off and it might be tougher to get this specific text box online. The first one is Vincent. Vincent almost makes it too easy because her hero ability literally just turns on Talisman of Cremation. We banish a card at the start of our turn with Runegate, play that card, 
pop the talisman and then all of a sudden we're getting rid of count your blessings and we're getting a lot of value off of a single item next up is Leviah. Leviah ha also like plays this card really well with her blasma fet flip when she flips, if you set up for a powerful late game, then you're going to have a lot of cards in your banish zone that you can play to really get rid of Count Your Blessings. And later in the game with, Levi with Leviah, if you're getting rid of like five to six copies, you're saving so much life in the end game. And Leviah already has a very strong end game, which means you really have a lot of room to close the door and try to get out of there. The next one that I think is interesting, and this one's a little bit more spicy, is Ninja. Ninja has Mask of the Pouncing Links. Mask of the Pouncing Links says that when something hits, you can actually go get a card with base power two or less from your deck and put it into your Banish Zone. So you can go get a card like Salt the Wound and put it into your Banish Zone and then play it, then trigger Talisman of Cremation. So you can actually set that up with one single piece of equipment and some synergy from an already aggressive Ninja deck. Talisman of Cremation looks to be like a pretty good sleeper card in my opinion in multiple decks as we're looking at the Count Your Blessings meta. The one card I didn't mention that does have good play in the Count Your Blessings is Reaping Blade. I didn't mention that card because I'm looking for generic options that we can play in literally any deck because of the generic text box, but Reaping Blade is a great option if you are playing Rune Blade. Guys, if there are any cards I missed or some secret tech you got, let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe for more content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Take it easy, guys.